I do want to show um, another way that you're promoting um, awareness. And I think this is definitely the right thing with your skill set. Is you made a movie first, do no harm. Hey, Mom, on the right short! She's not ready yet. I'm ready now! <laughs> We're done lunging her, you can. You promised Scout's honor! Oh, oh, <laughs> wait, wait, no, wait. We gotta get the beans out of Schwartz before we put you on her. Don't wanna have two matching shiners, do we? Hey, Mark, I got a world-class assistant truck washer here. Happens to have an opening in the schedule. <laughs> All right, Squirt. Hey, stop calling me Squirt. Mark. Fine. When I finish washing a spot, you rinse it off. Uh, but whatever you do, don't do this. I put it, Mom! Mark squirted me! Mark, be nice to your brother. Sorry. Here you go, squirt. Go me the squirt! Oh, oh, I'm drenched. You know I'm just gonna have to get you back double for what you did to me. I'm coming. Robbie. Robbie, quit screwing around. That's it. Robbie? Mom! Mom! Mom, come quick! Something's wrong with Robbie! Hurry, Mom! Hurry! Mom! It's okay. Wow. Why somehow along those lines, the way everybody's story starts, you know, it's just one day, perfectly normal, and then the nightmare begins. Um, and you right. captured that very well in that movie. That was well, my that, when we started um, promoting the diet, we started to hear, because the diet had been around since the 1920s, we started to hear from lots of people who had been on the diet, been cured by the diet gone on with life um, and they wrote with their letters again before the internet um, with their stories and th that is a true story of that family a, a mom named Connie Intermitty wrote from uh, just outside Chicago and in 1975 she that she lived on a farm and that was the story of 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 her kid and what happened in their adventure getting finding the ketogenic diet by, back in 1975 and her story was pr particularly dramatic because their kid was hospitalized and she found about the diet and that it was being done at Johns Hopkins but they wouldn't release him from the hospital um, to go to, to to go from Chicago to Baltimore and so she actually tried to kidnap from the hospital. She got busted, and eventually she got him to Baltimore, and he did the diet. And I still am in touch with the real kid today, and he's almost 60, I think, in the mid-50s. Of course, he's never had another seizure, and uh, he's done remarkably well. But that's an act. First to no harm was a true story. And what I found was that although their circumstances were different than ours in many ways. I mean, the their medical insurance ran out, so that made it particularly cumbersome for them to have a sick kid, and their house got foreclosed on, and that made it uh, very difficult. But for many of the certainly feelings that we have as parents of sick kids are very much the same. And um, and the sooner we go through that learning curve of we got to start making decisions based on our knowledge, um, the better. Yeah. I guess my question, Jim, is uh, you got Meryl Streep to, to act yeah. in this movie. And I mean, she's about as high up the chain as you can get. Yes. I'm just wondering if she had a personal, I mean, reason for wanting to do this movie yeah. 
my older kids went to school with her kids. And so, and she's like, I can't say enough about her in any way. She's the most what normal mom, in addition to being a brilliant actress, but she got to, you know, we went to PTA meetings and she saw what happened to Charlie from a distance and you know, she kept in touch and then she saw she was aware when he got sick and she was aware when he went on the diet and got better. And so she was very much a believer in the efficacy of the diet back then. And it was pretty, I mean, I remember making one call and saying, look, I, I want to do a movie about this. Are you on? And she, and she said, oh, absolutely. You know, send me the script when you got it. So, and she actually did um, in 1994. Yeah, in 1994, we did a, a video introduction to the ketogenic diet and she did the intro for it. I, can, I could show it. I, I didn't send it to you guys. I have it. I have it. Yeah, and she does the intro. And you see her, you know, she was very much, she was aware of what it did. And on the video, she says, she tells a story about, about a little girl who's walking along the beach and she's throwing um, starfish back in the ocean. And some guy comes along and says, what are you doing? And he says, you can't save all these starfish. And she throws one starfish back in the ocean and says, well, it will make a difference to this one. And that's always been sort of our philosophy. You can make a difference one at a time. Greg, you've seen the movie? Very, oh yeah, very powerful. I mean, you, you're, you're crying at it. You know, I, I, don't, I don't cry a lot, but I, I did for that one. It was that moving. It's a hard movie to get through. Yeah, no, really. yeah I mean, I'm, you're obviously rooting for them, you know, to, and you're rooting against the doctors. And it's like, you know, you, you, it kind of makes you mad at all doctors. It's like, well, not all doctors are quite that bad. But no, 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 it's not. It's not. I've, I've seen and some. And Jim, to take an music. experience like you had and, and, and to uh, uh, share it with the world, and that's a huge difference that you're making. So I, yeah, it's I a wonderful thing you're doing there. Yeah. I, well, I hope more people see that movie, and I hope you know it's, it's the sort of thing we need to make more movies like that in order for the world to wake up. It takes a lot to change, to change cultures. Yeah, I, I don't think life is that complicated. And for me, if you just, I know there are a lot more facts and whatnot out there, but it's there's some specific truths that are in place, and one of them is if you wake up and count your blessings and understand that for each blessing they don't come for free you owe something in exchange and then if you look at life that way and see the among your blessings it's like you got one of your kids back i mean there's how much can you do to show your gratitude mm -hmm. and so i think a lot of the charlie foundation is we're just so grateful they have gotten charlie back Mm -hmm. Speaking of the name Charlie Foundation, it just I, obviously is named after your son. But right. uh, my initial reaction was I thought of that movie way back in the 60s, Charlie, you know, Flower, oh, it was based okay. on the book Flowers for Algernon. <laughs> and I yeah. remember, you know, they gave him some drugs and he got really smart and then they quit giving him drugs and it wore off right. and then he went back to, you know, the way he was. I thought, well, would the ketogenic diet help that guy? Anyway, that was just my thought. I don't know. I don't know. There are a lot of people, and again, especially if you're going on it here, one of the problems in the, today is that people, it's so out there now, the ketogenic, you know, you can go into a grocery store and find keto products, right? Mm -hmm. but if you're using it, the diet for a real medical purpose, you can't, there's, you, you have to pay a lot more attention than right. buying keto candy bar or something you really have to you know measure 
uh, protein. And, and why is that so critical? What what's like? Can you give me some examples of, yeah, of where you could go wrong by just getting any old thing? Well, the whole idea is to get at the right level of ketosis. In other words, bring fat for energy to help your medical problem. So, if you're if you're if there are too many carbs that you're eating, you won't get into ketosis. If you go into too rigid a form of the diet, you can go into ketoacidosis, which mm -hmm. can be a big problem too. That's why, again, for if you're on it for a medical problem, if you're just on it to lose weight and you want to try a keto candy bar, fine. But if you're on it for a real medical purpose, that's why it's so important to be working with a trained dietitian. How much of that, that, that can be self-regulated? Like, can you check oh. your, your blood sugar and say, you know, this is where I'm at and, or yeah. are there more variables and you, than-, than and, you, <clears throat> and you monitor your, you can monitor your own ketone bodies. Okay. You can either do it now with a finger prick or okay. back in the day, we used to do it. I think they still by monitoring urine. You can just, you know, put your in a, a dipstick in urine and turns a certain color, then your ketones are are at the right level. The doing a, a blood thing is better because you get an accurate reading at the moment. When you test urine, it's delayed because it takes everything a while to get into the urine. There's some other, I guess, other things they than, have to measure. Just, yeah, there's a lot more, Greg, you have to measure. They have to measure the salt, the sodium content, your electrolytes, all of that has to be measured at all times. Your blood sugar levels. Uh, I don't know if they did this back when in the 90s, but now, yeah, we had to measure everything. It was a lot of those little, you know, it's little devices goes complete like diabetics have, and you, you check checking yeah, all the different things at, all day long. Yeah. Which is why you would have professional help with a dietitian yeah. and probably a yeah. medical yeah. practitioner. Yeah. Yes. And again, you got to distinguish between a real medical problem and just you want to lose some weight. Hey, if you like these kind of conversations and you'd like to see more, click like and subscribe to our channel. And if you're at the computer and you'd like to hear the whole podcast, click right here.